What's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. My name is Andrew. Thank you for joining me today. This is the DeVilbus Capital Allocators channel. We're a private group of investors investing on the cutting edge. Now, I want to break that down, right? Investing on the cutting edge, it means these are new technologies, right? We have to uh, really educate ourselves and gain that full spectrum understanding uh, to have conviction in these investments. Now, I've been in crypto for a while now and I've seen them come and I've seen them go. I've seen the most bullish people on XRP, Stellar, all that, flip flop, leave the groups, leave the community, uh, FUD on the, on the things, or just really start to kind of, of question what is the role of XRP? And we're seeing a lot of that again with the launch of the stable coin. So we're going to jump into Monica Long's recent interview. She just held it uh, with the block. Now, this guy did uh, interview Brad and David on stage at, our, at XRPL Apex 2024 just recently. We're going to dive into a little bit of what Monica was saying here. Uh, but before we do that, quick announcement for the group. We did drop the XRPL Magnetic Dex Ecosystem Exploring. We did a deep dive into the Magnetic Dex. Make sure you check that out. So let's get right into it. Monica Long, uh, you know, says, right, like there's, there's two things I want to talk about. Actually, three from this interview. And I got it clipped up right here in this two and a half minute video. Monica Long, uh, class act as always. Love Monica. She's such a great person to be in the posi position she's in. Um, and so let's, let's talk about what are the three things I want to talk about here, right? Number one is what is XRP's role? Uh, number two is, you know, what is the stable coin going to do? And, uh, number three is, is they mentioned that, you know, payments are on pause. We're more focused on DeFi, right? And if you go through my YouTube channel, you know that, um, I've been talking about DeFi nonstop since I started this, uh, this, uh, really XRP focused YouTube. I know you see, I have a few other cryptos down here, Algorand, Hedera, Stellar. Uh, I'm a blue chip guy, right? I, I'm a conservative player in a high risk market. Uh, I want, you know, I actually just also dropped in here the portfolio building, my new 6040 portfolio thesis video. Check that out too, if you're a part of the group. And we really dive into my theory on portfolio building in the cryptocurrency sector because this is a new market. Uh, it's very volatile. It shakes a lot of people out, a lot of FUD, a lot of fear, uncertainty, and doubt. And as an XRP enthusiast, it pains me to see people who I once looked at as almost like an expert uh, now begin to lose the faith, lose the vision of what's going on here. So I'm going to try and paint this picture for you guys. Uh, really quickly, as we listen to Miss Monica Long and as we comment along, wanted to really iron out and make this very understandable for everybody. The XRP Ledger's initial use case as a uh, bridge currency is still underway, right? That is still something that is going to happen as we move into a world of tokenized assets. We move into a world of stable coins, whether that be in the form of a central bank issued stable coin or a private company issued stable coin. Uh, this was the original concept when it comes to XRP as a bridge currency. And so the creators of XRP Ledger uh, really formed it into a DEX, right? The OG DEX, as David says. Um, and then since then, we've moved on to automated market makers, borrowing and lending and so forth and so on. So what you're really looking at here is a foundational piece for building applications and, and software on top of a payments and a value network, right? This is a value network in and of itself, how to get value from point A to point B. Uh, if you need to route payments, it can do that. All kinds of assets in the ecosystem. And we're seeing multiple different, um, you know, branches out from that as if, if you would, uh, if you understand the language, uh, you know, you have the root network, right? The root network uses XRP for gas fees. They have amazing projects being built out over there, such as the Futureverse. Some of the most promising metaverses being built out in congruent with the XRP ledger. You have Flare. Flare, uh, you can st uh, basically stake your XRP, earn a yield on that. You have Evernode. You have Zahao. We have um, 
Corium Bridge for DeFi. We have the Axelar partnership opening up into the cosmos. And so we have this really interoperable network of networks being built out here. XRP is the native currency on that network, meaning to sign transactions, you're paying in XRP, right? The gas fees are in XRP. Uh, the, the fees on the EVM side chain and the native currency of the EVM sidechain is XRP. So XRP is needed, right? And as we go through this flywheel effect of adoption, uh, XRP's demand is gonna be uh, increased over time. Now, someone asked the question, why would an institution actually buy the token XRP? And then my channel, you guys know, I've been focused on this for a long time an institution is going to want to buy and hold XRP because of the DeFi liquidity markets. The DeFi liquidity markets are going to change everything. Uh, and you really have to understand older business models and concept like Visa, MasterCard, Amex, uh, banking payments. You're able to make a killing uh, uh, sitting at the bottleneck of these payments, sitting at the bottleneck of, you know, um, custodying people's assets. And that's what we're really getting to here is there's so many, uh, you know, they said that this technology was going to take away the middlemen, but in reality, it's creating a more efficient middleman. And so now companies are going to be able to sliver off payments and sliver off percentage fees of these new middlemen business models so it's i mean it's so many of them it's ridiculous and it's really going to come after that cambrian explosion after regulations so let's listen to what monica long's talking about here and if you if you're starting to understand what a cryptocurrency really is right when you have bitcoin right it's a store value okay so now xrp also has that quality to it it's a store value if you believe the network's going to be adopted it's a store of value for it, for you. So we really have to think of this in a broad spectrum, right? You can't just say, is XRP important? Oh, well, of course it's important. It's the native currency on the ledger. And if you don't understand why the native currency on a ledger is important, then you need to continue doing your homework. I love to bring up Algorand, this token right here, Algo. I love to bring up Algorand in this com in this context because Algorand has governance rights. Uh, so you have to hold a certain amount of Algorand to have rights on the blockchain. So we're talking about uh, incentives to hold XRP would be you can add liquidity to liquidity pools. Uh, you can vote on the uh, fees, competitive fees for the pools. You can uh, bid for the continuous auction mechanism so you can arbitrage the pools. And I think a lot of cryptocurrency people don't understand how massive this is. This is actually very, very big business. And uh, Ripple being in position to accommodate institutions for institutional DeFi. So the answer to the question, why would an institution want to buy XRP is strictly that institutional DeFi. the same reason they're going to want to hold an x a, a, a ripple stablecoin they'll hold xrp and once their team has done all their due diligence they'll start to trickle into the coriums the flares and so on and so forth so institutional DeFi is the name of the game right now you know she says their payments business is somewhat paused now i don't i don't think that means you know, all the payments network they set up is just no longer working. No, it means they're focused on DeFi right now. I think they're just basically just waiting on regulations for payments. So while they're waiting, you might as well build out these other critical aspects of building these networks to gain the network effect, uh, such as institutional DeFi, retail DeFi, uh, interoperability partnerships axel arbicorium with root network and futureverse like these are exciting things that cannot be understated so let's listen to miss monica here and let's let her explain to us what is going on is what what the customer wants or it's just the most cost efficient option um, and when you think about major corridors like us dollar euro um 
there's a lot of liquidity there. You don't really need a bridge asset like XRP. That was the, the inventors of the ledger, the way that they'd always. Now, a lot of people would listen to that and think, oh, no, you wouldn't really need XRP. She's correct. You would not need XRP in that uh, in that way. Like if I had a friend next to me who had a Zaman or a Zaman wallet and I had a Zaman wallet and I wanted to send him uh, five bucks. I would send him five bucks in the stable coin if the stable coin was there right now, if the Dex or if, if it, if I had a ripple stable coin and he wanted a USDC and I sent him that now the Dex might smart route through XRP to do something like that. Uh, and that's where XRP's use case comes in as a bridge currency, but that's not only what XRP's for. It's for much more gas. Uh, more uh, things like that. So, and it has a, it, it is deflationary as well, right? So you have currencies like the dollar that are being inflated while deflationary assets, these more risky assets will not be so risky in the future as these, you know, these geopolitical events continue to play out uh, as inflation continues to be inflated, right? Like they might get it under control, quote unquote, but it's still going to be an initial rate of inflation. And so investors are still going to be looking for ways to beat inflation right now. In the private group, we do these study sessions in the study session tab over here. Now we've gone over BIS papers called Y DeFi, right? And in the Y DeFi paperwork, they say the main incentive for institutions to engage in DeFi is that the yields are going to be outpacing traditional assets and inflation. So that is the answer why they would hold an XRP. But the blockchain itself also has to have the criteria met for regulations uh, to be enforced on chain. Now we've heard David talk a lot about uh, bring litigation against somebody if necessary out of DeFi pools, right? If you need to bring litigation uh, and, and because someone has not paid a loan back or something like that, institutions, they have to have these things. It's talked about and, you know, when I think back to the very early days of Ripple, what we had always talked about was the use case for a neutral cryptocurrency as a bridge asset. So like XRP in this case, would be for in the future of the internet of value, there's going to be all kinds of things tokenized on chain. And you need an asset like that for really efficient cross currency or cross token settlement that are, it's the more the long tail. Let me simplify. It's more the, the long tail. And we're not in that world yet. Right. Uh, and we just can't let the rest of the crypto market outpace the XRP ledger ecosystem. We have to continue building and it's now more important than ever that average Joes like us get involved on the ledger, not just holding XRP. We have to be involved in the ecosystem. That doesn't matter if you're in the root ecosystem and you're, you know, keeping up with the Futureverse projects or multiple other things. Uh, it's time to get involved. It's time to actually transact on the ledger of assets and in currencies where, uh, the costs, when you think in the context of cross-border payments, um, you have different uh, currency crosses between, you know, a sub-Saharan African country and the Middle East or Europe. Um, and the liquidity is not as great. The costs are very high. You could pay, you know, north of 10% on that um, in fees uh, for a payment like that. So that's where we see XRP having its role in the context of uh, developers, as, a, as another group, uh, the U.S. dollar has been the on ramp for our whole industry. Right? It's like how you—it's the starting point, mostly for any kind of uh, buying cryptocurrency or other type of tokenized asset. It's a starting point for trading, um, and, and that's that's where within XRP Ledger. <laughs> And we still think there's so much more upside potential for the XRP Ledger's DEX, the decentralized exchange. And so that's really what it's coming down to is strengthening the DEX, uh, bringing more 
liquid pairs to the decks, uh, attracting more liquidity providers to the decks. David said it himself uh, at XRP Las Vegas. The liquidity providers are who we are hoping will drive the adoption of the ecosystem. So while everyone who's just holding their XRP in a cold storage wallet and hoping and praying that this network gets adopted, they're hoping and praying that you put your XRP to work. And it's, it's crazy uh, that we're in this type of situation. But luckily, um, through you know the magnetic decks and orchestra finance and Corium and Axelar and these these really good initiatives from Ripple to go out and become more interoperable, uh, you know we have to applaud that and we have to see why they're doing it. Right, they're doing it to make a robust super dex that's cross chain interoperable that holds all kinds of foreign exchange pairs, all kinds of cryptocurrency pairs. Uh, any token you would need should be on the XRP Ledger's DEX because its market making is next level compared to market making that we've known so far. So the market maker on the XRP Ledger is really why you would want your pairs on the XRPL DEX. We... Uh that you know there needs to be high quality stable coins available on that exchange if you're a liquidity provider and let's just say you're in your wallet right let's just say this is my phone and i have my zaman wallet and i'm providing liquidity to let's just say five to ten pools and i have you know so much capital deployed in these pools you don't always have all of your capital deployed you have dry powder you need to hold that dry powder in a stable coin because the volatility of the cryptocurrency market, right? Like it just makes sense to have that stability there. Uh, for it to be more useful um, for all types of developers. And we've been more focused on DeFi. So you think about DeFi. Uh... We've been more focused on DeFi. Do not let that go over your head. DeFi is the name of the game now. Payments are on pause. I'm not saying that they haven't built out a global network, but we don't have regulations and we're under regulatory capture. Ripple's back was against the wall and they had their guard up and the DEX, interoperable super DEX, is that right hook to get them out of the corner and back in the ring. Now we're in the ring and now we are up front and personal to be the first ones to have major adoption from institutions for its DeFi. Payments will come, but it's not time yet. It's not legally time. Um, USD stables are the stable coins available on that exchange. Uh, for it to be more useful um, for all types of developers. And we've been more focused on DeFi, so. All right, guys. We're focused on DeFi. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. Um, we did get uh, do the drawing for the giveaway. So uh, if you know, you know. I'm really excited about that. The shirts are in. They're fire. XRP Ledger looks really great. They're embroidered. The embroidery is not going anywhere. This is a dry fit material. It'll be good for years. Check it out. Link in the bio. Community and educational resources in the bio. We're going deep into DeFi. Uh, I have the most simple DeFi course online. It does not get any easier than Let's DeFi Part One. Uh, part One. Literally a one, two, three process. You're up and you're moving. After you understand that, your 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 job is to then just educate yourself on DeFi which is exactly what we're going to be doing in the group. You get that first month on me, so jump on in, introduce yourself. We'd love to have you. Until then, I'll see you on the next one. Peace. Tracking your location. Analyzing biometrics.